Yeah, well, that's the question. And of course, we can't predict the near term. But here's what we know. I mean, we are seeing the kind of capitulation in certain parts of the market that we haven't seen in a long time. We're trading at about 17 times next year's earnings. And if you look at P.E. dispersion over the last 10 years, one standard deviation away from the average would be 16 and a half. We're pretty close to 16 and a half. And I know members of this committee and my esteemed women colleagues and very nice of CNBC and you to have us all here for International Women's Day would say that this is as bad as it might get. But I would submit that 2020 in March, when we were looking at the beginning of a pandemic that could destroy economies, the educational system, society, and the fabric of our life, was scarier than what we're envisioning right this minute. And so we think that, yes, there are opportunities here of very solid companies that are selling at more attractive prices than they have in years, both on the growth side and the value side, the high multiple stocks and low multiple stocks. So this is a time that we would not sort of panic and sell, but stay committed to what we believe in, perhaps upgrade our portfolios and add to names that we never thought we would have an opportunity to buy at the prices at which they're currently selling. Okay. Dow's going positive. S&P looks like it's knocking on the door. NASDAQ moving in that direction as well. So we'll keep our eye on that as we uh, go three minutes or so past noon in the east. I'm thinking about stocks, ladies, like Shannon, Best Buy, 28% off of its high. Amazon, 28. Microsoft, 22. Meta, 50. Alphabet's just 16, so it's performed better than a lot of those. But, right, I bring up these names. Like, how should we think about names like that that you own, Shannon, all, all of those names? Home Depot, you own that 23% off of its high. As to a point where you'd like to buy more. Well, I think that it's all about portfolio construction. And so we came into this uh, year uh, almost almost entirely invested, um, as is our mandate. However, I think that you bring up a couple of names, Microsoft in, 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 as an example. We have trimmed that stock multiple times over the last several years. That's the largest holding in our portfolio. Do I think it's justified that we see the declines that we see? No, of course not. But the market gives me what it can give me. I think when you look at your portfolio in terms of wanting to add Look at the quality companies in your portfolio. Strong return on equity, stable earnings growth, low leverage. Don't those three things sound like what you want to own in an environment where we have geopolitical conflict and a, a, an increasingly less accommodative Federal Reserve? Sure does to me. And so if I go down the portfolio and I look at the ability to reallocate to different names in the portfolio, we're certainly looking for potential exit points. For instance, we trimmed Accenture earlier this year. Um, we had a significant overweight. That stock has underperformed, and we reallocated the proceeds into some of our higher conviction names. But be careful. Over the next couple of weeks, we are going to continue to see this pressure. The Fed hasn't moved yet. And so I do think that, you know, between now and the end of the month, there's opportunities to reallocate. But selling indiscriminately some of these high-quality names in your portfolio might lend itself to some less beneficial outcomes than if you waited a few weeks and got past a couple of these catalysts.